Hello, everyone. Kurt Olfer here, and welcome back to another episode from Home Federal Labs. Today, we're continuing on into the next two plays that we see within Fiori's fourth master dagger, uh, fourth master dagger uh, section, uh, and it's it's a very interesting concept because personally, it is extremely difficult to it it, it it's hard to consider all that's happening right here because of in moving into these positions from the fourth master cover. We start to see uh, displacements of strength uh, and structure things that could be actually very it could be detriment to us. And as a quick as a quick shout out, I want to say this because it, it, there's a great video that um, the Exiles have done in regards to these two covers right here and their observations. And I will tell you right now that I think that they again love what they put out there, spot on. Thoughts and considerations are uh, especially right there in place here when you talk talking about like you know when it's just the thumb that is holding on to a wrist. And we're gonna look at that, we're gonna look at that throughout the technique. And again, so please check out their footage as well. Um, they're also very, very, very deep practitioners when it comes down to the works of Fiori Filano de Liberi. So with that being the case here, let's take a look at these, uh, these next two plays. Okay, so this week, um, don't have Connor here with us, couldn't make it here for, uh, for video shooting here. So I'm going back to Vincent. But that's also not necessarily a bad thing because essentially here we are going to be looking at arm placement more than anything else off of that fourth master cover. Uh, this, these two plays, um, you see depictions of what some people have called like a, a, a mess of arms or eight hands or there's lots of different variants that people put out. There. I think that, I think the Exiles said something like the eight hands or something like that. You have all this stuff that's up here. And I call it like the spaghetti arms, not because you've had a heavy lift, but because you're, there's just a mess, an entanglement. Both of these plays are very interesting because essentially you're working towards the concept of the upper lock, which as we've seen before from First Master comes across where we start making this kind of a shape. The difference is we're no longer, we no longer have a covering mechanism here that we're moving into like this. We have come into a spot where we off of fourth master dagger coverage. Okay, so both of these deal with tracing the arm, and it's a little bit easier when you can see against somebody's arm shape right here. But essentially, this is the elbow, and off of this cover mechanism, we're going to utilize whether this thing is going back and forth, shifting all over the place. Okay, so essentially, like I've said before, these covering mechanisms. They're not a one and done. They can be a one and done, don't get me wrong there, but ultimately we're dealing with and contending with, on this spot right here, the shift back into what uh, happens against somebody here. And I can be controlling hard here, whatever I need to do. But again, we're dealing with a strong person here, maybe a person that's desperate at us, we don't know. Off of fourth master, the first covering mechanism that we see here, it comes down to whether am I tracing the left or if I'm tracing the right. This is where it gets very interesting. And what I think is happening here, specifically when we talk about this, and this is where, again, uh, if I turn this wrist, I'm using my wrist right here to turn the hand, and I'm gonna take the left hand, trace over, and come into a lock mechanism right here. Now, one thing that you can't tell is that my thumb is the only thing that's here. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to use Vincent for this. Um, it's the only thing that's holding this is my thumb. So this is incredibly weak. Uh, he, this can slip through very easily because it's only this portion of my hand that is continuing against this here. Uh, and of course, that becomes kind of a problem when you're talking about somebody who may be big or stronger or whatever the case may be here, right? So off of this, big concept right here. This could be something maybe they push at me. I, I turn the dagger away. Remember, we have two hands on here. Maybe I start pushing his arm. I'm manipulating in some form or fashion. And I shift across here, and I come across into this position here where I have held of the arm. Essentially, that looks something like this right here. So you're seeing, again, a form of second master into this, which allows for us to, again, gain grapple points here uh, against it. That's the first variant. The second variant of this, in my opinion, it, it's... You see the arm coming up under through here, which is again, it's a, it's a simple, it's a similar concept about from first master. I come here, I turn the dagger away, and I'm coming up into this position. The only difference in this here is again, I don't have, I'm not using a, a thumb down kind of covering mechanism. I've not come across and wrapped in. It is I've 
push myself here up into fourth master. Now remember, like I said for fourth master, however we get here, it could be, again, is this because I do this right here? Potentially. Is it also possible where there could be also the limitations of, uh, you know, may, may, maybe maybe I, I put myself right here and I'm working into a different grasp here? Absolutely. There is no right answer to this. The answer is that essentially you made this covering mechanism, you made these coupling grip, and you're working it from there in some form or fashion. Like I said before, you can kind of shift back and forth here, which allows that kind of torquing and turning. So that's how we're, we're going to utilize that here as we set this. Big part about this. So coming up here from this, the, you'll, you'll see in the image the guy almost looks like he's turning towards his left area, his left side. And what I think that means is right here is this person is pushing into me and I'm going to step across into the body here. Now the, the big part about this, this is where it gets kind of complicated. So I'm coming across here and I'm holding the wrist. This is even more so precarious in comparison to what we have. I have a backhand position right here. It's barely holding on to this. However, is it a moment? It's not a position to hang out in. It is a position that I'm moving to and through on. In from here, I'm going to come around, you know, tracing through the elbow, and I'm onto this side right here. This is a lot of torque on the shoulder. If I grab the arm, I really don't have anything, so I can't really come across, so I'm going to hold onto his arm. Again, the grip is compromised. It's not the same thing as far as coming into First Master here, ripping across, and moving in here where I have that really strong uh, double grip that, that uh, 2 to 14 Pharaoh doubled. We're coming in into this. And because my arm is on this part of his, I have all the leverage necessary to turn them down over my shoulder. It's a very nasty position. Both of these are very uncomfortable, okay? From here, when I come across into this, my thumb is holding onto this. I'm not holding onto this for a long time. I've got shots to the groin. I can come off this way. Maybe I can, or maybe I come here and I rotate down into third master as he tries to hit me with a band. But again, I'm here and I put myself in the third master. From the high position, the other one, coming up and coming into this. Now the big thing here is you have to be careful of this dagger. I have all the space in the world to turn this down. Unfortunately, like I said, we don't have Connor here this week, so we're looking at this right here as a means of being able to roll off. Regardless of what we have here, these are both places. We're not sitting here wrestling out of this position. These are positions I find that you're moving to other areas of consideration. So you can see with the video here that, again, it's not, it's not that these are not advantageous. It's, it's more along the lines of, in my opinion, that uh, I would say also very similar to what the exiles are saying is you are holding on but you are barely holding on to it because in order to maintain some of these things, as you rotate the hand, the thumb is the only thing that's actually holding on to the rest of the body here. If I do, if I, if I try to keep my grip total, then my wrist starts to break and I lose the structure piece. That's the things I observe with this. So in order to make some of those things that happens as far as concept on the body, I have to make sure that I'm holding on to this, this with just barely anything in the hand. Um, I think the exiles have a really good uh, thought process on this too. Is that this is an immediate response. Like, so you're in there, you've struggled, you've struggled, you've struggled, and then I'm moving in, I'm going, I'm tracing down, I'm moving up to the spot here immediately as fast as I can, and then from that spot, the whole decision to go to that position is an immediate action. It's not, I'm not hanging out there. I'm going through, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, I will say too that I have experienced in sparring, it is very possible also to reverse this and go back into the third master dagger uh, place where you can come over with it. It's just depending upon where that dagger is. And again, I think so many times here when we look at historical martial arts, you know, it's about who can get who first. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's some there's some dark truth in that when it comes down to martial arts. However, at the same time, too, self-preservation is something that the back portion of our head is constantly going to let us constantly let us face ourselves with. Um, and with this right here, again, if I'm recognizing that I, you know, this is this is a part right here where it's it's almost 
counterintuitive in some ways for me, um, where, okay, I'm here, but if I move to this position, I'm actually weaker structurally in the hands that are retaining the dagger than I was if I just held it off in fourth master place right here. Again, that could be many situations. That could be made the guess against the wall. This right here, these plays, understand, just show two people come up and something happens. This, but that's not reality of conflict and not in combat arms. Something happens here. You could be up against the wall. Maybe you got hit in the face with a vase and then someone comes across this way. Maybe you're dazed. Who knows? And at that point in time here, this is no longer, no longer working for you. So in an attempt as it comes off, you shift into those positions. Are you giving up strength with your thumb grip right there when it comes down to the tops as far as the arms? Absolutely. However, in, in giving that up, you actually may be allowing yourself the ability to gain the advantage position right there that you didn't have in the first place. And from there, it's not that you're just going there to hang out in this position. It's that you are moving to and through uh, one of the four adversary positions. In this case, I think going down into two to, into two to Porte Ferro to break or throw the person, all sorts of things right there. Lots there as far as considerations go. So please understand that these positions, that there are structural de deficiencies that happen, but just like what the Exiles were saying in their videos, this is not the place to hang out in. We're not hanging out there. I'm going to fall through with this as fast as I can to destroy your shoulder because there's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else like if I hang out there, you're going to take this thing, you're going to take my your, my grip away and keep sticking me. So anyway, with that being the case here, that wraps up this video here. I hope this has been fun. I hope you found this interesting. Please consider sharing this with a friend out there. Let me know what your thoughts are. Because again, this position right here, um, I agree. It's, it's, it's it, you know, I think I said in there, I was like, spaghetti arms just like this and i'm not talking about like the the weak the arms that you get after a good lift or anything like that. i'm talking about like there's this they're all entangled it's this big mess which to me also talks is also perhaps even maybe a little bit of art and poetry together where it's showing how this kind of thing is always messy it's always nasty and it's it's desperate it's very dangerous so, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are out there. I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear your considerations. And maybe you're, what are your interpretations when it comes down to this? Have you seen the Exiles videos and you thought, hey, you know what? I like this idea and I tried this out here. Did you find similar truths? Did you find ways to, change, to, make, to, strengthen these, to strengthen these deficiencies in the hands? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment below. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. I hope you continue staying here. I hope you consider uh, subscribing and, and liking and sharing with a friend out there. Love to hear your thoughts out there. Hopefully this inspires you to also go down the path of, of training and looking at uh, Fiore's works of Armitsari. Um, and again, just being able to share out there with the, with, the rest of the, with the rest of the world. Big thing about this right here is I want to be able to share as much as possible when it comes down to this. So again, it's not possible without viewers like you. So thank you for tuning in. And as always, everybody, like I said, until I see you next time, as always, be safe out there. Train well and fight on. I'll see you all soon.